We are live, and because I'm not doing a drama video, there's going to be like 10 people watching this, just honestly. Um, <clears throat> so if you weren't here for the last video, I announced that I am probably not going to be doing many of those videos anymore where I'm talking about a particular person. I will definitely be talking about a lot of concepts because the concepts are wrong. But I'm so, like, I, I can't get myself to do it. I don't want to, right? I don't want to talk about Alexandra Rodriguez anymore. I don't want to talk about these fucking losers anymore. And I'm sorry, but like me calling them losers is just my opinion. But if you can't see that these people are using their gluttony for views and then somehow the people that follow them are accepting of it, the best way to get these people off the air is to not watch their shit. Like a huge portion of what, what happens with these people is that they get hate watched. And I'm not going to add to that anymore. I'm, I'm just not going to. Now, don't get me wrong. If it is a more societally pressing thing, like it's a concept or something like that, I will probably talk about it. But picking apart the, the individual video, videos of these people has become an exercise in futility. Because very honestly, the people that follow that person are not going to be woken up by, by saying the things that are true, right? Like Alexandra Rodriguez is clearly, clearly a food addict. Clearly. She is choosing food over her child. I will say it a hundred times. It's always true. Because if not, she would already be at a healthy weight. She didn't even want to lose weight to get pregnant. It's sad, right? She had a blood clot not too long ago and didn't lose the weight, you know, or is just losing it kind of slow, whatever. I hope she loses the weight. That's my thing. I hope she does lose the weight. I hope all of her audience loses the weight, all of it, but I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not talking about Amberlynn Reed no more. I'm not, I'm just not. Now, if it's somebody famous saying stupid stuff like Lizzo, I probably will because very honestly, that's a huge audience and I'll just point out the things that they said wrong. But if it's like, you know, this person ate this today. Of course they ate, that, they ate something stupid. They're a food addict, and they're normally addicted to ultra-processed food, which many of them are. Many of them are addicted to ultra-processed foods, and that is the topic of this video today. Because you should ditch ultra-processed foods. You should absolutely get your percentage of ultra-processed foods of your total daily calories under 20%. And I'm about to go over why. And sooner or later, there's going to be a tool out there that will help you find out what the percentage of ultra-processed foods you're taking in in a day. I have a very strong idea. Um, that there's going to be. So I just want to just want to go over a few things today, right? This is my take on ultra processed foods. And this is a long take. So please do sit back. And this is only an abbreviated version of it, by the way. This is very, 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 very low in, in, in the information that is out there on ultra processed foods. I just felt that this was the bullet point stuff from the years of research I've done on this, literally years of research in the book, hunger free and happy. There's an entire section on this in most, in all of my stuff. I talk about avoiding ultra processed foods as if they're only for pleasure. I personally take in somewhere around five to 10% of my total weekly calories in ultra processed food. And that normally comes from like one indulgence. And honestly, it's normally, and I count this anyway, it's normally homemade pizza crust or something like that, that I make myself. I don't buy, we don't, I have not, we have not store bought bread in fucking years because if we're going to make bread, we're going to make it. If we're going to have bread, we're going to make it. And honestly, I, we don't eat it when we're out and we've eaten like when I go out, I normally eat very seriously, like the health food that, that is at a restaurant because I'm not going to poison myself as much as humanly possible. I used to eat 10 mixed doubles at a sitting. That shit doesn't even fucking degrade McDonald's. McDonald's hamburger buns do not degrade. They do not uh, decompose. And I put a lot of that shit in my body. I'm going to make sure I'm around for a long goddamn time because my gorgeous wife deserves it. Anyway, the definition of an ultra-processed food is per the NOVA classification. And the NOVA classification is the scale that most foods are, are, uh, are done on. And I, I think it's pretty good. There, I would change a few things and, you know, I have some ideas and that I'm going to put into practical application in a little while, but uh, they are industry formulations with additives, high in sugar, fat, salt, and low in nutrients. Think processed meats, sugary drinks, packaged snacks, uh, anything with flour in it, anything with added sugar in it. Anything with flour and anything with added sugar. Added sugar is ultra processed and it's addictive. And these ultra processed foods, they're literally, literally engineered to be addictive. They are engineered to come to the bliss point, which is wild that we know this. Everybody knows that. And yet we're not thinking that over half the population at least has some sort of ultra food, ultra processed food or, uh, and or sugar addiction. It's kind of crazy, but 
An umbrella of over 45 meta analysis is 9.9 million participants. Higher UPF intake linked to 32 adverse outcomes, including a 21% higher all-cause mortality, 50% higher cardiovascular disease mortality, 66% higher, higher heart disease mortality, 40% higher type 2 diabetes, 55% higher obesity, 23% higher colorectal cancer, 22% higher depression. Doctors, why are, why are you why are you doctors prescribing, uh, you know, especially just general practitioners who receive no mental health training, by the way, and no nutrition training, they just prescribe SSRIs. Um, and 48% higher anxiety. 48% higher anxiety. Think about that. A systemic review of a meta-analysis of, of 207,291 participants, highest versus low, was uh, had a, a, another a thing of another 21% ultra uh, of all-cause mortality. A Sun cohort with 19,899 participants in a 10-year follow-up, the highest quartile, more than four servings a day, which, by the way, four servings a day is about seven lower than what the USDA tells you to eat because the USDA would want you to eat seven to 11 of them servings a day of ultra processed foods of grains and shit but versus the lowest a link to a 60 62 percent higher all-cause mortality so somebody like me who doesn't take in a lot of ultra processed food compared to somebody that takes in the normal american dose of ultra processed food they are multiple times more likely to die than me because they abuse themselves the pure study with one 138,076 participants and a 10-year follow-up had high ultra processed food linked to elevated cardiovascular disease and mortality risks Here's one that I found very interesting, by the way. This is the ELSA Brazil cohort. It has 10,775 participants, and it was had an eight-year follow-up. The eight-year follow-up was mean. The actual six- to ten-year follow-up was real. The eight-year is a mean average. UP and I've read this study countless times, so I don't even really need to look at my notes. But the UPF intake of above 19.9% of total daily energy associated with was associated with 28% Faster global cognitive decline and a 25% faster executive function decline with no uh, no memory impact. However, a systemic review of the meta-analysis of uh, observed studies, high versus low uh, uh, UPF intake was linked to a 44% higher cases of dementia risk. So this food you're eating is making you stupid and giving you dementia. Pretty... Uh, it sounds like something that I think people would want to, you know, minimize in their life. Uh, crazy. A prospective study shows that 10% increases in UPF intake are often associated with 13% higher risk in Alzheimer's. So for every 10% you take in, you have a 13% higher risk. So if you take in 60%, as most Americans do, you are looking at a, what, 78% increased risk of Alzheimer's? Good job. Good job. Good job. A cross-sectional study of 265 young adults, which is a very small study, which I, I don't, I'm, I held it in here because it trends linking high ultra-processed food to increase executive function difficulties, though not statistically significant, associated with sedentary behavior impacting conditions. So it can be also associated, also associated with sedentary behavior because it's a blood flow thing when it comes to cognitive abilities. You need to get your blood flowing. It's one of the reasons why you need to be active every single day. Appropriate fitness level activity, which means if you are only capable of walking a mile, walk that mile. If you are only capable of walking for 300 yards, walk that 300 yards and try to get one more step in every single day than you did before. Anyway, um, let's see the dosage response per 10 percent of high uh, of ultra processed food energy intake, four to five percent higher all cause mortality, four to 15, excuse me, percent higher all cause mortality. 12% higher type 2 diabetes, 7% higher obesity, 6% higher uh, higher being overweight. So 7%, so say you have, uh, say or 12% higher type 2 diabetes and you eat 60%. People. So for every 10%, that's 72 increased percent of type 2 diabetes. It's the food. It's the food that is doing it to you. It's the food that is making you sick. Is the food that is giving you type 2 diabetes. It is the food that is keeping you as a type 2 diabetic in most cases because if you switch that around, you would become more insulin sensitive and you would get your ability to not have to take insulin and metformin in. Again, it is the food 100% of the time. Per average daily serving, uh, uh, per average daily serving is an 18% higher all cause mortality risk. Per 10% dietary share, a three priests higher premature mortality risk. Linear increase is observed when risking uh, elevate when risks elevating as UPS exceed low levels below 10 to 20 percent in healthier uh, healthier cohorts like Mediterranean diets, which is why 
I talk to our coaching clients and in the books and everywhere else that you're about to see, I talk about trying to keep it under 10%. 10%, you're in the, under 10%, you're still considering the green. Between 20, 10 and 20%, you're in the yellow. Over 20%, you're in the red. Most of you right now are over 60%. You just don't realize it. Most of you are over 60%. U.S. average, which I think this is from years ago, is 50, 55% of calories for the average person is ultra-processed food. 54.4% in uh, adults 19 to 39 years of age. A global range, 10% in Italy. Has anybody ever wondered why Italy has the oldest population, just about, of especially uh, European descent countries? It's because even though they smoke their asses off, which is big, that's why COVID hit them so hard. They have a high population of people that still smoke, and they have one of the oldest populations in the United States. You can tell the difference because Florida has it had a very, very, very high elderly population and was not hit nearly as hard as Italy was because people don't smoke at the same rate, and it's an upper respiratory virus. Duh. Um, but 10% in Italy to 58%. In lower middle income countries uh, in the U.S. and in low middle income countries, it's 16 to 30. So think about that. In low countries, in countries where people claim that they're poor, which they are compared to America. In our country, being poor means you normally are at the higher end of the spectrum or over it. You're normally over the average. You're normally in the 68 to 70, 70 percentile range of eating ultra processed foods. The risk com uh, combines with uh, lin our linear and this is why I tell everybody, keep your ultra-processed food injection, ingestion as low as humanly possible. Uh, let's see. Would PB2 powder count as ultra-processed? It absolutely would. It absolutely, unless it is just, unless it is just freeze-dried, uh, unless it's just literally, oops, unless it's freeze-dried peanuts that are just then powdered. If it is, if the only ingredient is just peanut and they're freeze-dried and ground, then I would say it's fine. But if not, if there's any other ingredients, yes, it's ultra processed. 100%. In the South, vegetables have been awful this season, and gro uh, the groceries putting out rotten. Uh, we try to grow most of our own. Let's see. Bad banana wizard. Okay. Uh, ultra processed foods are so expensive compared to real food. Absolutely, they are. Well, if it says only uh, only peanuts and salt, it might be just peanuts and salt. I would wonder what – I would look into the processing of what they did to make it that way. That's for sure. There are, scienti the, they are, there are scientific industry jobs just to figure out ways to uh, make us reach that bliss point in foods. Exactly. You're called a food scientist. Food scientists should also be – we should just call them a mangula scientist because that is a – ridiculously horrible experiment to, to perform on people. It's amazing to me. So, but anyway, folks, I will take some Q and a for about a couple, a couple minutes here. I wanted to tell everybody here. Whoop, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That, that would have given away a big secret. I almost boo booed. All right. Here's where you can get our coaching, by the way. Daily communication, weekly video conferences. This price is going to change and get much, much, much higher. This is $249.99 for the six months in this holiday season for new clients. And there is a special deal for clients if you're for people on the app. If you're already on the app and you want to check it out, just check it out. But this is going, this price will be going away forever soon for a very good reason that I'm going to share with you before too long. But these prices are going to go away. It's not that we're not we're not stopping coaching, but we are going to. You know, we are offering anybody to get in now and to we are offering for people that are already coaching or already on the app to take advantage. But we are this price is going away. This is six months. It'll help you get you get you through the holiday season, teach you healthy habits. Most people that took us up on this offer last year, they lost weight over the holidays, developed healthier habits, and then they lost the rest of the weight they needed to lose within the course of the next year. Because once you get through the holidays and realize that you can build healthy habits through the holidays and still enjoy the holidays. Because we focus on, you know, uh, satiation, satisfaction, appropriate fitness level activity, eating whole foods for the majority, still planning an indulgence so it doesn't throw you off your rocker, controlling your binge eating if you have it, controlling your cravings. We focus on those sorts of things. It is not some extreme workout or anything like that. It is 
uh, way that we have that we are developing for people and we have developed for people for them to control their own habits. You should be able to grow your own stuff. It's crazy. We, we grow a lot of our own stuff. Crystal's in the, doing amazing with our, with our garden. Uh, mad scientists because they make frankenfoods. Yep, exactly. Let's see. Jack, do you think that ultra-processed food companies uh, pro uh, pushing protein junk food is helping or hurting the average American relationship with food? Uh, talking about uh, protein Pop-Tarts chips, that's absolutely hurting. Uh, very good question, though, Jack. Thank you very much. It's absolutely hurting the population because it's still ultra-processed. And very honestly, it still has emulsifiers, shelf stabilizers, those sorts of things, endocrine disruptors. Uh, many of these things are carcinogenic, and they mess with your metabolic rate anyway. And most of them cause systemic inflammation, which then turn into neuroinflammation. And again, they're ultra-processed. But even protein Pop-Tarts, it still is the flavor of sweet. And most of the time, it still has added sugar. And even if it doesn't have added sugar, it's still the flavor of sweet. And really, the only sweeteners like that that don't have a glycemic, uh, a glycemic response, or at least a massive one, monk fruit sweetener, which is amazing. So yes, you know, while I will, I still personally ingest some uh, Nula bars, you know, on occasion, like, you know, maybe once or twice a week, I view them as part of the, I view them as part of the ultra processed food, or at least a processed food, you know, because they are. Uh, UPF is the devil, it makes people hungrier and, and often a little or, or no satiety. Exactly. People just keep eating and eating and eating and eating. It's fucking horrible. And notice how YouTube really does not announce this to anybody, by the way. Like when you're talking about, when you're not doing drama and you're just talking about, you know, things to help people, that will get suppressed very quickly. No Garner Backyard Flocks allowed where I, uh, where I, I used to live uh, to, be, to be rural now. It's just uh, public housing everywhere. Jeez. There should be, they should at least have a public garden then, you know? I mean, at the very, very least. So, all right, folks. I'm going to run. I'm going to go. Uh, I have some chili made up. I'm going to go make some food for the wife and I. I haven't eaten yet today, but i got to get a little bit more water in me before I eat. And then I'm going to go. I might be back this evening. I might not. I don't know. But if not, I will be back tomorrow and I'll be sharing some more insights as to try to get people healthy and happy. Because you want to be hunger free and happy. That's how you want to go through life. And you're not going to do that by being dehydrated and eating a bunch of ultra processed foods. That I can guarantee. So my name is Alan Roberts. Please check me out. Please subscribe. Put the notification bells on. God damn.